everybody, please excuse the crazy bun. I've been to the gym this morning. Well, I say I've been to the gym. I didn't have to leave my house to attend the gym. Um, you guys know I work out in my garage. So I have been to the gym um, and haven't, I showered but I didn't bother doing my hair because I thought I'd do it later because I don't know whether I've got a job or not tomorrow. And obviously I want to like have it as clean as possible. Anyway, besides the point, excuse the top knot. It's a bit messy, but I did put a face on for you. So, you yeah, know. Um, what are we going to do today? So my Q&I, Q&I, my um, Q&A is coming up. But today I thought I would introduce you to my pets. So a lot of you will have seen that I do own um, some strange pets. So we have always had cats growing up. Sadly, Owen, our cat, died last year. Um, and as we live in rented accommodation, and he was sort of, we, there's no cat flap in this house, um, and we rent, and so obviously to put one in, you have to ask, and it costs money, and it might take your safety deposit, and all that kind of stuff, or you've got to fork out for it, all that kind of thing. Um, so he was very used to going in and out. He was an outdoor cat and he would obviously be inside as well so he would quite happily when it called come back in so that he could be in at night time all that kind of stuff um whereas mum if we wanted to get a new cat was always very sort of keen like having them from really young so i'd want kittens and the whole cat flap thing is blech. so um i don't know whether that might change later but we don't currently have anything cute and fluffy to hang around with or you know, buddy up with. Um, and I have always had like pets in the house and I've always loved it and I'm a huge, huge animal lover. So currently, and some of you may find this a little bit weird and I don't know whether like the beauty thing is like a bit strange and then, oh my God, she has weird pets. Um, I currently have three praying mantis and I have a crested gecko. And today I thought that I would introduce them to you. Um, so excuse the brambly intro, but that's what today's video is about. So the backstory is we've always had cats. We don't have one anymore. I love pets. I wanted something to love. Um, I did get my crested gecko while we had the cat still alive. Um, and I've since expanded to like <laughs> three praying mantis on top of that. Um, I will introduce you to my pets now and tell you a little bit about them. If you would like a proper care video, then of course, let me know. And I will happily do that for you. But I will probably just kind of introduce them, let you have a little look, um, you know, how old they are, that kind of thing. And like a little bit of the basics of, you know, why I like them or, yeah. Um, I will show you... I think I'll show you Fred first. So my crested gecko I got in 2015, he was a juvenile. So I don't know precisely how old he is, but I would say he's coming up, well, he's probably two and a half, maybe nearly three. So he's fully grown now. Um, I'm not very good on the morphs of things. So the morph of geckos tends to be their coloring and pattern. Um, I'm not very clued up on this. If any of you guys keep reptiles or you breed them or you can tell me what kind of morph you think he is, um, I kind of think that he might be a harlequin, but I'm not entirely sure. He does also have kind of like black dots on him as well, which is one of the kind of like um, markings that like Dalmatian would have, as you can imagine. Um, so I will get him out first and then I will tell you a little bit about him. <laughs> this is Fred he's probably yeah you can see he's firing up so here is Fred Fred is a crested gecko I will get him out fully in a minute um, but I have just woken him up so crested geckos um, are a type of gecko um, they are I believe the only kind of gecko that can drop their tail but it won't regrow. So these guys and leopard geckos are really popular as beginner reptiles. You can see he's on the move. Um, the difference between these guys and those guys are these guys are arboreal, so they like height. Um, you don't really need a heat map for them unless you live in really, really cold climates. They are very easy to look after. Their diet is mainly sort of 
fruit and stuff in the wild and until I think it was 1994 they were actually thought to be extinct. Um, you can see that he's super cute. Let me bring him closer. Now you have to be really careful with these guys. Um, they are very docile, happy little creatures. Um, and they have little sticky feet so they can actually climb up glass. And he is very cute. I don't know. I guarantee that he will shit on me because he normally does. <laughs> or, or my brother. Um, but you can see. So they get their name because I don't know if you can see. I don't want him to jump. Um, they have these little crests. I will do some close ups afterwards. They have these little crests on their head and around their eyes and it sort of goes down to halfway down their back um, and that's where they get the name from so he's a crested gecko other interesting facts um, he has no eyelids so in order to clean his eye or re-moisturize his eye or get stuff out of it um, they lick their eyeballs um, they have a semi prehensile tail which as you can see is very long. Now it's quite rare to have a crested gecko for all of its life. They can live between 15 and 20 years and not have it drop its tail. That doesn't mean that you're a bad owner. They drop it if they're stressed. Um, I've known people have them and they've dropped them in the night time when they've done nothing and they've been sleeping. Um, as you can see, Fred's very chilled doesn't bite, um, they're very docile, really easy to take care of, lovely little creatures, come in a wide variety of colours, um, and yeah. <laughs> so that's Fred, obviously by his name he is a male, um, and I just think he's really cute, I don't really know what else to tell you about him to be honest. Um, I think I must have. Sp I've sp I think I've spooked him once, and he did bite me once. But if I hadn't seen him do it, I would not have known. So they do jump. Um. Oh, I knew it. See, he peed, and now he's gonna poo. I know he is. Oh. Every time. Every time he does this. Oh no, that's fine, you go ahead. This is what I don't understand. He is so small. Well, he's what, the size of my hand maybe? A little bit smaller, but that's like a tail. And every time he wheezes and then he poos and the size and the stink of the poo versus the size of the creature is phenomenal. I don't understand it. Yeah, he's shitting on my bed. Just wait till he's finished. I shall pop him back in his cage. And then I shall um, summarise a little bit about him. He's even spreading. Well, that was fun. Um, to summarise, Fred is two and a half to three years old. He is fully grown. I believe that he's a harlequin. Someone that's really good at morphs or has reptiles themselves can probably tell me, maybe, when they've seen some close-ups, um, what morph he is. Um, they are very docile creatures. They are arboreal, so they live high up, um, so their tanks need to be um, quite high because they don't really come down to the ground. Fred actually does quite often um, but that's I would say unusual for the kind of gecko that he is. Um, they often like to shit on you um, and yeah they're lovely little creatures, very docile, very easy to take care of and um, they do really well at room temperature. Their diet is mainly sort of like rotting fruit and stuff in the wild so I give him little bits of like mango or banana um, 
and then I feed him the complete Rapashi diet, which is basically a paste that has everything they need, including like calcium and all that kind of stuff. Um, you mix it with water and it sort of it smells like bananas, it's like fruit based and it's got like, I think it's got some like mushed up crickets and stuff in there as well and all the, all the stuff that they need. Um, so he gets fed on that and then he has some fresh fruit as well. I have tried um, giving him some live food, he is just absolutely not interested. I find them hopping around a couple of days later or dead and it's just, there's no point. He does, he's never really shown an interest. Um, he does it, he's lazy, he doesn't like to catch things. Um, yeah, that's kind of it really. Let's show you my mantises. So, I have three mantises. I only have two different kinds to show you. First of all, I'm gonna show you what I feed them on. So this stuff I get from eBay, it is basically a flightless form of fruit fly and you can buy them in cultures like this, um, which you should be able to maintain and so that the sort of life cycle keeps on going so you don't have to repurchase. I haven't quite got the hang of this yet. Um, this was not 20 pounds, that's an offer. Um, I think, I don't know, five including postage or something and this will last for like, I've managed to make mine last about six weeks because they do obviously breed in here. You can see this has got like some mushy stuff at the bottom, um, little like wooden things to keep humidity in and they can sort of cling on to and lots of maggots. Besides that, I have two different kinds of praying mantis. Sadly, the other one that I was keeping, which was a pink impusa panata I found dead this morning, I feel of no fault of my own. Um, it was very tiny, it only molted once and didn't appear to like catch food or be very as interested as the other ones. Um, so sadly that one died. Um, so let's start with the biggest one and the one that likes to try and escape every time I open the lid. So I keep my mantises in a container that is this big. For a mantis that lives, they live about a year, um, you will need something that they can climb or hang from so that they can molt because like reptiles that shed, these guys um, molt like a tarantula does. So it outgrows its skin and it, you know, when it gets bigger and it sort of throws it off, it takes about 24 hours to sort of harden up again. And that's how they sort of grow. Um, I believe that both of mine but I think actually all, I think both of these ones are females because you count the segments from the underside of the abdomen. Um, and five segments I believe is a female and anything over that sort of seven is um, a male. And the females tend to be significantly bigger than the males. So the two mantises that are the same that I have are the Malaysian blue. They are quite green now, but they will be blue when they're bigger. So these guys, I believe, they were bigger to start with, but I think that mine are about an L3 right now. We'll try and get close to the camera so that I can show you one. have two of those which have very <laughs> see they're really clever little bugs actually because they know like it will rush up to the air I've got another one in here that's also a female exactly the same and you can see um, this one's got a stick in it so that it can hang and molt that way and this one's got lots of sort of more foliage that's sort of sturdy enough that it, it can hang down that way and in fact there is a couple of, there are a couple of molts in there that I can see so yeah they're about the same age and then in here you guys may have seen I don't know whether you can see from there but this little white nub of gorgeousness is my orchid mantis um, which obviously gets its name from looking like an orchid um, now my orchid mantis Again, about the same age, it's had, 
This is an L5 now. But she has been a little bit poorly. She's got a poorly leg, front, well, front leg. She's much easier to handle <laughs> than the other two. She's much less jumpy and very chilled. Um, but she does have a poorly front left leg. Um, I don't know whether she had a bad molt or something. I'm hoping that when she molts next that it will fix itself. Um, and because she is an injured mantis, and obviously the way that they hunt is they jab forward with their front two legs and grab their prey. Um, she's not been able to do that. So I've actually been hand feeding her with my tweezers. So I hope that you have enjoyed this weird kind of meet my pet um, video. I know that it was a request. Um, as you can see, oh, this one does have a name. Her name is Edna. Um, the two Malaysian blue ones don't have names yet, but they're both female, so any suggestions would be great. As you can probably tell, Edna and Fred are, no offence to anybody who are called Edna and Fred, um, but I kind of like basic or like older sounding um, names for pets because I just think it's funny. I don't know why, but Fred is so beautiful and Fred, is, and Fred is not a particularly beautiful name. I don't think that I thought the kind of like juxtaposition was quite amusing. So <laughs> yeah, Edna is now chilling out um so yeah if you've got mantises and you know whether if they have injured a front leg or anything like that that they have sorted it out after they molt again then please do let me know as you can see like she's struggling with it because it doesn't move properly and so when she picks up her other legs to move forward she sometimes steps on this arm and i can see it's quite frustrating i mean she's eating i've been hand feeding her um, with my little feeding tweezers, um, the diet of like fruit flies every few days and then you mist their tanks as well so that they can drink the droplets but obviously do not spray them because they are bugs and they will die and you don't want to drown them. But yeah that's kind of it. It's much smaller than the other two even though she's slightly older. Um, she will be, yeah she will be probably smaller than the Malaysian blues also but you can see she's very chill she doesn't really jump the other one is basically batshit crazy um, <laughs> and that's kind of it really um, much more is known about these orchid mantises and like, other kinds of mantids um, than the Malaysian blues there's not a lot oh she's decided to jump but that's fine um, yeah so a lot more is known about her um, and as I said, if you have any tips for caring for an injured mantis, as this was my first experience of keeping any kind of praying mantis, although I do seem to be an expert on it now, <laughs> um, then yeah, let me know. So these were my pets. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different, but I thought that um, you guys might find it kind of interesting because they're a bit weird. I, just, I don't have a cat or a dog or a hamster. So um yeah, that's kind of it really. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you would like a properly thought out care video or how to set up a tank, um, what I used as my substrate for um, Fred's vivarium, all that kind of stuff, what you should be keeping gecko in, um, whether leopard gecko versus crested gecko, you know, my opinion on what's easier to keep, excuse me, all of that kind of stuff, um, then do let me know and I will happily make a proper care video for you. I've given you bits and pieces in this one, but if you want like a properly planned out you need this as a starter kit i don't recommend this don't bother with this make sure you do this kind of video um a proper sort of 
fact sheet then do let me know and I will see you in the next one so from me and Edna Fred and the other girls it's goodbye for now bye